In this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this. A tree bookshelf with LED lights. I don't know if you have a wife that uses Pinterest, but it's been a favorite hobby of my wife ever since she got pregnant. You see, in order to prove that you're gonna be a good parent, you first have to demonstrate expert level interior decorating skills. You can't just have a nursery with a crib and a rocking chair. No, no, no. You have to design it as if it's gonna be on the cover of Good Housekeeping. So in addition to the $400 custom wallpaper, my wife thought I could build a tree bookshelf that she found online. So let's talk about how I built this. I first imported the picture into a CAD software and then tried to decipher all the correct angles and lengths of all the different pieces. Here's the cut list that I came up with. I ended up using four eight foot two by tens to construct this tree, but you could potentially get away with three if you shrunk some of the pieces down a bit. I first cut the boards down to size using my miter saw and come down to the lengths based off of that cut list I showed you earlier. I then cut the angles into the boards using the miter saw. The design of the tree makes this part really simple because it's just composed of 15 degree angles and 30 degree angles. I then used my router table to route a 9 16 inch channel into the back of each of the pieces, which is where the LED strips will sit. A 5 8 inch bit probably would have been better to fit the LED diffuser strips that I ended up using later in the build. I then used a pocket hole jig to join together any pieces that didn't have a 90 degree joint. After about uh, 10 minutes of tooling around with the pocket hole jig, I finally got it figured out and it's pretty slick. I then screwed everything together using the pocket hole screws that came in the kit. So I thought two screws in between each of the pieces was going to be strong enough to hold the pieces together, but it turns out that it's not. So I'm going back through and adding additional pocket holes and additional pilot holes so that I can add four screws per joint between the pieces. I thought painting this tree would go really quickly, but I was wrong. It took forever. 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 I think I needed to prime it first or add some sort of sealer because the wood just kept soaking up all the paint. I think it took me a total of four coats to get this painted.
I then moved all the pieces upstairs for final assembly. I had my uh, eight month pregnant wife hold the tree up while I searched far and wide for any sort of studs in the wall. Getting this screwed into the wall was a good marital bonding experience. As in, I got really frustrated and my wife made subtle comments about my carpentry incompetence. I couldn't find a stud to save my life. That's okay though, those extra holes I put in the wall add a little character. For the LEDs, I ended up using three strips of WS2812B LEDs. The strips were five meters long and the LEDs individually addressable, which means you can control the color of each individual LED rather than the entire strip having to be the same color. I soldered some male headers onto the base of the first strip. You have to solder on these male headers so that you can plug the wires into the Arduino, which is the microcontroller we'll use to control the LED strips. Here's a wiring diagram for connecting the LED strips to the Arduino. The power wire, which was red in my case, connects to the five volt pin on the Arduino. The ground wire, which was white in my case, connects to the ground pin on the Arduino. The signal wire, which was green in my case, connects to digital pin five. It's digital pin 5 because that's what's specified in the code that I'll show you later. I also soldered a 330 ohm resistor in series with the signal wire. I attached the LED strips in the channel that I routed just using the sticky backing on the LED strips. I ended up using two and a half strips to cover the entire perimeter of the tree. I had to use some hot glue in certain places where it didn't stick too well. Make sure to try to burn your fingerprints off as you hold the LED strips in place as the glue cools. These specific strips have some connectors on each end, which make them really easy to daisy chain together. Unless you don't want any gaps in between strips. So I ended up cutting off those connectors and then soldering the strips together so that the space in between those LEDs was as close as possible. These LED strips are kind of ugly, so I bought two boxes of diffuser strip to place over the top of them so they're not as visible. I just measured out the length of diffuser strip against the tree and cut it down to size and then just kind of wedged it into those channels. I purchased multiple power supplies until I ended up finding one that was compact and powerful enough for the LED strips. You need the additional power supply because the Arduino is not powerful enough to source enough current to power all of those LEDs. I ended up settling on a 5 volt 10 amp power supply, which I didn't think initially was going to be powerful enough, but it seems to work for my setup. So for the code for this project, I just found an example of the fast LED program online and copied and pasted it into my program. I did need to include the fast LED library so that the code functions properly. After uploading the code to the Arduino and plugging everything in, here's the finished product. Since finishing this build, my son has been born and he seems to really like the tree. Unfortunately, I've realized that building this tree has in no way prepared me for parenthood, but it did showcase my dedication. If you're interested in building this tree yourself, 
I'll include links in the video description to either the supplies I used or similar items. If you like this video, then you might also like some of my other videos. I've got a couple of Star Wars helmets that I've 3D printed, and then also my map of the United States made out of Starbucks mugs. Thanks for watching.